first off, I'd like to ask, do you, do you drink tea? Are you a tea drinker? At oh, all? tea. What's my day without tea? And what's my day without ginger tea? I really need ginger tea. It has to, and it has to be the right amount of honey, the right um, slices of lemon. Um, and then sometimes I actually add shredded ginger to it. Um, but yes, I'm a tea person. <laughs> It's, it's really my, my pleasure and my honor to, you know, have this conversation with you. I'm a huge fan of, of your film. Um, both uh, my wife and I watched it last year and honestly, it's on the top of my list for, um, you know. Thank you. Yeah, really, really uh, congratulations on the film. I appreciate that. Thank you. It's been a journey. <laughs> it's been a journey. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. I mean, I, I see the accolades coming in, you know, just one after the other. I, I saw the final draft um, nomination. So congrats on that. Yeah, thank you. That means, I, I wouldn't say it means more than any of the other awards, but it means a lot because, you know, it starts there. And um, I really do feel like if people love the film, it's because like I really did work that script. You know what I mean? And so it's nice to be acknowledged at that level. Yeah. I want to ask, did you have any mentors early uh, in your career that you want to tell us about? Yeah, you know, um, I did not go to school for film per se. I was a liberal arts major who couldn't make up my mind. And I remember, you know, taking the introductory classes um, uh, of film and I got to 16 millimeter and in that, in that communication film and video degree, you only do like two classes in 60 millimeter. I didn't want to move on from there. Like there was something about editing actual film on a nail, on a, on a film bed that just was like so tactile and just prescient for me. Um, and when it was time to move on, I didn't want to. So I was like, I'm not going to be a film major if I can't make film in the way that I want to. So I just kind of bounced around from class to class. Um, but at around 20 years old, I started taking classes at the Frederick Douglass Creative Arts Center in New York. It's no longer um, there, but it was a hub for a lot of um, marginalized writers who weren't getting uh, training in academia, maybe couldn't afford it. And you know, you paid $200 and you got uh, eight weeks of round robins with other writers, amazing writers. and. Um, I took classes under the tutelage of Fred Hudson, who was a co-founder with Bud Schulberg, who wrote On the Waterfront. Um, Fred wrote a movie called The Education of Sonny, Sonny Carson, which was a, it wasn't a black exploitation film, but it was during the black exploitation era when a lot of films of uh, the 70s were tapping into like black consciousness and civil rights um, or, you know, post-civil rights black consciousness. He wrote that film and then went on to found the center. And he was just, he was like, he was tough love for me because I was a 19, 20 year old kid who was kind of romantic about what it meant to work in film. And I would write these very long passages <laughs> because I didn't quite understand the structure of a screenplay yet. Um, I just wanted to put every detail in there and he kind of whipped me into shape. And so if I had a mentor, it was him. And uh, he's no longer with us, but there's so many of us um, who have learned from him and taken classes there. Reggie Blythewood, Gina Blythewood, um, you name it, Kevin Arkadai, you know, like who created um, New York Undercover. Like these were all of his students. And um, I'm very proud to call myself one. The other mentor in my life is just movies. You know, like I was a person who, I was an apt pupil. I was raised by a cinephile and so, you know, the idea of shooting in black and white wasn't foreign to me because I saw nothing but black and white films in my childhood. So, yeah. That's great. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, have similar affinities to you. kind of taught myself, uh, I mean, taught myself in the sense that it was really the love for film and cinema and just right. you know, going to back when there were like VHS stores and rental stores, I'd go and wow. rent VHS, um, yeah, VHS tapes. Um, I, I really love the heartfelt expression of your personal experience in um, mm. the old version. 
question. Thank you. Uh, how how did you mix kind of memory and imagination? You know, to as you said, I mean, sc screenwriting is a is a is a format. A a uh, right. There's there's a craft, way in yeah. which a craft things that work mm -hmm. and don't. So. Can you talk a little bit about that? Just mixing memory and imagination. Sure, sure. Um, you know, like like many artists, uh, you know, this idea came out of adversity. Um, <clears throat> I always tell the story about, <clears throat> excuse me, getting fired off my first film job uh, as a screenwriter, and just feeling like I had no control over my voice as a storyteller. At least that's what I felt. And so I was compelled to create something that was my own. You know, my character says, you know, something that is mine. And so, you know, I was like, oh, I'm gonna do a web series, you know, and this way I can control the output, the length, you know, um, I can upload it and maybe cultivate an audience there. And, you know, the idea was there'd be 10 episodes, 10 like five to seven minute episodes. And then at the end, you could download a free mixtape or whatever. But the 40 year old version initially was a web series. And then um, um, I knew I wanted to make a web series and I figured why not make myself the center? Um, not from some egotistical rant or from this um, idea that, oh, I wanna be the star of something because I wanna be an actor, because that's not the case. I'm not looking for it. I'm not trying to be an actor. I wanna be a director, but you know, making myself the subject, casting myself at the center would just make it easy to move forward, you know, and I'd have control of the storytelling. If I want to make certain shifts, I can, because I'm, you know, kind of pushing the, the pebble forward. Um, and I was like, if I'm going to put myself in the center, you know, I'm not an actor professionally. What if I just did a send up of my own life, you know? And so it was like, okay, I'm going to play a version of myself. And I, knowing that I'd play a version of myself, I had to use real elements. One, my last name. Like I was like, I decided I'm gonna be Rada Blank in my film. Um, I knew I wanted my brother to do it. I was inspired by films like Tiny Furniture where Lena Dunham's entire family, her mom or sister are in it. I was like, okay, so this has been done before. Um, but at some point the story started to tell me what it needed. And so even though I have this very long journey, you know, I had to kind of truncate that and maybe create some devices that weren't necessarily true to my life, but were necessary to kind of push the character forward. Like the 30 under 30 award, I've not won an award like that, but I figured this would be a device that would kind of haunt her. Um, it would speak to age. So it was kind of doing two things, um, speaking to her age or her, her aging, haunt her because it's some past accolade that she can't seem to get past or um, surpass, I should say. Um, and then, you know, it, what's true of me and the character is the loss of the mother. Um, the difference is that I had more space between that loss than my character. For my character, it was a year. And so I just started doing these things that I felt would amplify the character's journey, not necessarily speak to my own because it's something that is still unfolding. But in the span of two hours, what are the tent poles that I can create? Some inspired by my life, some not. I have not choked a theater producer, but you know, the day is still young. Um, but just creating different devices that would help push plot forward, um, you know, create this three act structure and then get her to the end of her arc, so to speak. Talking about going, you know, doing your, your first feature um, now, perhaps historically speaking, it would be considered later in your life, right? I think historically yeah. women have had less access also to financing and, and been able to make films. What would be your advice to filmmakers who are starting out at a later age? Um, not to sound like, you know, I'm, making a catchphrase, but I think the important thing is that you, you don't age out of your passion. There's no such thing. There's no expiration date. That's something to hold on to. Um, and I think, you know, I'm just as strong as the fellowship um, that I've been fortunate enough to create amongst other filmmakers. You know, like when I, I remember I was, there was a conundrum about what format uh, we would use. I knew this was black and white, but I think that, you know, people were concerned about like, 
you know, how, you know, the turnaround time in processing film and what if we just shot in color and, you know, and then you just make it film in the end. I mean, make it black and white in the end. And I didn't want to do that, but I, those things were getting in my head. So I called Terrence Nance, uh, who's a very good friend of mine. And, um, he just became a mirror and was like, no, you know exactly what it is that you want to say. Don't let these things shit. So for me, it's about the fellowship. It's about the community. And you don't necessarily have to find that in academia. I feel like there's so many resources available to us, not necessarily in terms of like, the reality is that, you know, the, the filmmaker listening to this may be marginalized. You know, they may have, uh, suffered from ageism, sexism, racism. Um, but there are tools available to us if we just take the time, invest in seeking them out. Like, you know, anyone can make, as long as you have one of these, you can make film. You know, you get that, you get some willing participants who want to um, help you, you know, bring your vision to light. and you know, taking the time to craft the work before you shoot it. I really do think it's all very possible. You know, like I, I, I don't know that I believe that earlier on in my career, I think I was very intimidated by film because I was made to feel like you needed a lot of money and support and maybe a, you know, a, a celebrity cameo or what have you. But, you know, when I think about people like Kathleen Collins and all of the amazing, women, Mary Haran, who, you know, made first films later, <laughs> not in their 20s, not in act, not fresh off of academia, it's all very possible. For me personally, it would not be possible if I didn't have the fellowship and community of um, Black and Brown filmmakers kind of pushing me along and guiding me in the journey. I think the other thing I would just add, um, if you're open to hearing this, yes, Nani, of course, is please. that, you know, I think filmmakers would do themselves a service if they let go of the idea of being completely prepared. You know, like there were things that happened on set that no mentorship, no book, no uh, academic program could prepare me for. I think what makes a filmmaker a filmmaker is how we rise to the adversity that shows up. And that's something that the situations can't be taught. You know, it's just something that you learn in the moment. And I remember having what I would consider maybe my biggest failure on set. We were so close to, to, to the end of the shoot. This is probably day 18 of 20. And um, I was like, physically tired. The other thing is to drink a lot of water. I was physically tired. I probably wasn't drinking enough water. And I just was like emotional, you know, in a way that wasn't serving me or the crew or anything. And I, I felt terrible about myself. And I remember taking a cab from Brooklyn all the way to my apartment in Harlem and just crying and being like, oh, I'm done. I quit. I'm, I'm done with this stuff. Because it just, the, that feeling of failure was just something I felt like I could not get past. And then I remember this thing happened. It was the next day <laughs> and I woke up <laughs> and I went back to set. You know, like to me, you can have your playbook, you can have your notes, you can have your anecdotes, um, your, you know, dioramas, your, your whatever, your note cards, what have you. There's just this thing that happens on set that's really going to challenge you. I don't know in what form, if it's a relationship between an actor or something technical or resource kind of falling through a permit. But I feel like we are made in those moments. And so I just feel like we should embrace them when they come and just say, okay, thank you universe for giving me this opportunity to discover how bad I want this. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I mean, I definitely felt it when I watched your film, you know, myself being a woman of color approaching 40 and just seeing that narrative of, you know, somebody at the, the taking kind of, I think, uh, your, your story and, you know, really telling it through your voice. And I felt that, I mean, I, that was your poetry coming through and 
I believe that somehow the universe brought us together in this very moment to, you know, talk about this. So I really appreciate your time. Um, Same here. I can't, I can't wait to see your film and to see you, um, you know, transform the way you use words, you know, from journalist to filmmaker. I'm, I'm, ex I'm really excited for you. I really am. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brenda.